starting a new Mandarin ministry in the hall next door at the same time as we have our English service here. All right, you got that? So in two weeks' time, there's going to be something starting in the hall for Mandarin speakers while we're in here having our English service. And then the kids will be all combined um, with the kids' program at 11 a.m. And that's going to trial, we're going to trial it over December, January, and really launch it officially coming next year. Now, um, for those of you who've been with us for a while, you may not understand why we're doing this um, and what's so good about it. So I want to get Miriam and uh, Karen to, to tell us a little bit about why we're excited and why they're excited about this. So Miriam, first of all, you've been involved in the Mandarin ministry at 9 a.m. for a while, and families, you've got a young um, uh, Jonas year three, is he? Year two. Year two, going into year three next year. Why are you excited that this is now happening, that, you know, starting from next year officially, we're starting a couple of weeks' time, we'll have a Sunday school together and a new Mandarin ministry also at 11 o'clock? Uh, I think in the beginning, I'm, I'm actually not too excited. <laughs> I think we were trying to find a solution in the beginning because uh, our kids uh, just growing up and they prefer to use uh, English to communicate, which is really a big challenge uh, for our uh, Sunday school teachers. And uh, uh, also because the, um, the age difference is very big now. So if we, were, if we want to keep them in the Mandarin service, it means we really have to um, have two or three classes, I mean Sunday school classes. So which I think is really uh, we don't we can't afford to the resource issue. The, yeah, the yeah. resource yeah. issue. So um so when I think after some meeting, so when Stephen talked about this idea, uh, I think well, probably that's the best solution we can find so far. So I just try I so I just uh, send out a survey to the parents see how how you guys feel about this idea. So, um, very surprising. <laughs> Most of them are very positive and very excited about it, its suggestions. So they think, oh wow, it's just fun. Mm -hmm. And you know, because uh, I think, I think a uh, year, yeah, probably that's the time uh, we have to hand our kids over to the to English service. And uh, um, I think the time is very good as well, because it's 11 o'clock. Mm -hmm. So I think for young parents, probably the bit difficult for them to get up so early. <laughs> okay. So yeah, are you going? Yeah. So and I also think uh, uh, this is a very uh, good opportunity for us to reach out to more, um, you know, um, uh, mentoring speaking family as well. Uh, because I had a very long conversation with one family, and uh, she's very excited. She said, "Oh, Miriam, because I'm the immigrant, so I like to use uh, my help." Like my uh, uh, oh, yes, yes. So he, she preferred to use the, the Mandarin yep. to, to uh, discuss the, you know, all the spiritual issues. So, but also because her daughter is already uh, nine years old, so she wants to send her daughter to English uh, Bible uh, study. So I think she, this is really super for be swept in the manger. God sent more angels to see some shepherds. God's new king has just been born. God's new king has just been born, they all say. The shepherds rush to see the special baby. And then far, far away, some wise men saw a new star in the sky. The new star meant that a new king had been born. The wise men then came a long, long, long way to see him. God sent his new king just as he had promised. And his name was, can you all guess? Yes, his name was Jesus. I love listening to the Christmas story and how it's all about God's special king being born. Am I the king that God promised long ago? Jesus is the king that God promised long ago. So I'm going to actually pass the crown to Jesus. And we'll find out more about what sort of a king he is in the next few weeks. But first, let's sing a song.
so the kids, kids can go off to Sunday school. Well, welcome everybody. Uh, if you've uh, joined us recently, uh, it's great to great to be with you here today. We've got a packed crowd here at church. It's great. Uh, thank you for you welcome the message with the joy given by the Holy Spirit. And so it became a model to all the believers in Macedonia and Achaia. The Lord's message rang out from you, not only in Macedonia and Achaia, your faith in God has become known everywhere. Therefore we do not need to say anything about it, for they themselves report what kind of reception you gave us. They tell you, they tell how you turned to God from idols to serve the living and true God, and to wait for his Son from heaven whom he raised from the dead, Jesus, who rescues us from the coming wrath. This is the word of the Lord. All right, um, do me a favour. Can everyone just stand up where they are? We're going to do a little activity. Don't worry, it's not going to involve too much physical activity. Just stand up, stand up, stand up. Good. More, hopefully. Now, stay standing, okay, if... If you've ever had one of those dreams where you're trying to run, but it's like your feet are stuck in the mud and everything is like slow motion and you can't get anywhere. Stay standing if you've ever had one of those dreams. Oh wow, I'm surprised how many of you are sitting down. I thought everyone had those dreams. <laughs> but it's a good half of you. Okay, have a seat everyone. Um, apparently it's quite experience, but not, 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 not the um, These dreams where... Or it's not necessarily you're trying to run, I don't know those of you sat down, whether you, you're like trying to dial a number, have you ever tried to do that? Or sit an exam, and for some reason, like my daughter Emily's doing her HSC at the moment, I still occasionally get dreams where I have to sit the HSC, except I'm 45 years old in the dream, and I'm thinking, why am I sitting the HSC again? And every time you sit an exam in the dream, it's like everything's gone out the window, you're trying to write, but you can't recall anything. The same kind of dream. You, you guys know what I mean? You're trying to run, but you can't run. You're trying to dial a number, and the, the numbers are just getting jumbled up. You can't get it out, whether it's a pin number or a triple zero, or you're right, trying to sit an exam, and nothing is happening. And it just feels like so frustrating because you want to do something. You want to run. You want to dial a number. You want to sit that exam. You want to recall, but nothing is happening. I reckon that's how it sort of like feel like at the moment after the lockdown. Did you kind of get what I mean? After this year, doesn't life feel a little bit like that? You, finally lockdown is finished, you want to get up and going. It just seems like your feet are stuck in the mud and especially, I think spiritually, we want to re-engage. We want to come back to church. It's a great thing. You know it's good, but even getting out, I mean I'm preaching to the converted, you guys who are here, but it, it can be really hard, right? So hard to be motivated, so hard to move. Now, those of you who are in leadership, in ministry, at church, you might especially be feeling that lack of motivation and, and persevering right into the end of the year is really difficult. I mean, it's hard enough to get ourselves going. It's so hard to get others that you lead going. So as we think about relaunching after the lockdown at the end of 2021, as we look forward to the new year, this feeling of being stuck, of being weary, I, I think you'll agree that it's, it's dangerous, it's difficult, because how can we look onwards and outwards, even look towards the new year for like this? How can we as followers of Jesus, or as a church, I swear, be on mission in the new year, when spiritually we kind of just want to stay curled up in bed? So how do we do that? How do we actually relaunch? Well, the answer is, of course, the gospel. I know it sounds like a standard pat answer, but it really is the good news of Jesus, the gospel. The good news is not just the way you get in the Christian life, it's the way that you continue on in the Christian life. What we need is to be renewed by this gospel. I want to show you a quote from Pastor Tim Keller. And he says this, when the dynamics of gospel renewal are not in place, a church may increase in numbers but not in vitality. 
It may grow but fail to produce real fruit that have lasting results. It will exhibit symptoms of lifelessness. Most or all of the growth will happen through transfer, not conversion. 